Hey, this is Kristen Shaw, and I am here with Mike Swear from Toyota. He's the chief engineer for the brand new, all new Tundra, and I'm excited to talk to him about the whole Toyota Tundra process and the engine and everything that's been going on with this new truck. And I'm really excited to be talking to you about our new truck. So Mike, tell me more about the aerodynamics of the new Tundra. Well, it, it's a great story. And aerodynamics is kind of that uh, uncharted territory. We, we've always worked with wind tunnels and, and uh, tried to improve the aerodynamics of a truck. But let's be honest, they're not very aerodynamic. <laughs> right? It's kind of like driving a plywood down there. And there's, there's manufacturers who have gone after aerodynamic trucks and they haven't done well in the market or you know they haven't been received very well because of what the appearance is. It doesn't look like a pickup truck. So the challenge to the team is we have to meet certain requirements for aerodynamics to reduce our load road to improve our, our you know, fuel economy in there. And uh, one of the areas that we looked at overall is how to reduce aerodynamics or improve aerodynamics by 20%. The easiest thing to do on a truck is just slam it down. And uh, the lower to the ground, just like you know a, a race car would be, the better performance you're gonna have. But the problem is you still need approach angle and departure angles to take a truck anywhere you wanna take it. So one of the, the areas we looked at is we put grill shutters in, in to close the grill off at highway speed they work great. We kept our, our intercoolers open so we can always get maximum air in there. But uh, one of the interesting thing is after spending hundreds of hours in the air tunnel and addressing the concern about how we put an air dam across the front to improve that, that air, you want the air to, to go around the vehicle, not to go underneath the vehicle. Um, and this is just what I mentioned about slamming the vehicle down, right? But when we look at that, that air dam and, and some of our competitors put a big air dam on there, how do you address the, the approach angle? What do you do when you go off road? Well, you can get under there and my engineers suggest the thing. We can get under there, you know, you take some bolts out and then, then you can get your full approach angle under there. You wanna climb under a truck and take bolts off? <laughs> I don't, that's what I told them. I said, you know, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna throw it in the woods and I'm never gonna see it again. And I'm gonna be really irritated that I had to take it off. <laughs> So what they worked on is what we call an active air dam. And what this does is depending on driving mold, depending on speed, it will open up. So it's underneath the truck, it folds down and seals off and it gives you that big air dam that you need when you're at highway speeds. When you go at low speeds or you're off-roading, when you put in four wheel drive, the air dam tucks itself up. Okay, and that so automatically happens. Automatically you happens, you don't have to do anything. And it's got a breakaway clutch in it in both directions. So if you happen to actually hit something with that air dam, it's going to fold away. And next time it cycles the motor, it's going to re-engage the clutch and it works perfectly. So you don't have to worry about the damage of, of that. That's not the interesting part of the story. As I said, we spent hundreds of hours in the wind tunnel with this. Our aero team came to me and they said, yeah, we really want to uh, get a 28 foot trailer and I'm like so why do you guys need a trailer well we're gonna put it in the wind tunnel you, you're gonna put a trailer in the wind tunnel why are we doing this and they're like we've never tested how the vehicle performs when you're towing so we we really need to understand what's happening when we're towing with wind so we can improve the whole goal was how do we improve our fuel efficiency when we're towing and so I'm like okay this is kind of crazy i don't know why we're doing this but okay and the interesting thing that came out of it is they found that when you have a trailer having that air dam down at highway speeds decreases your your efficiency cutting through the air or i should say increases your coefficient of drag by 26 percent it That's actually gets huge mm -hmm. right. so having that air dam is five percent having it down when you're towing that air dam reduces your, your efficiency by 26%. Huge, huge difference. And they brought this to me, I'm like, nah, that can't be right, right? And you start looking at the smoke lines, which is a cool thing when they're in the wind tunnels, you got the smoke lines and you're seeing that, and you're seeing what's happening with the trailer. Well, it's blocking air from going around and that air goes around the truck and you got the draft coming off the back of the truck and it creates turbulence because it hits the trailer. And so by 
opening this up when you go into a haul mold or you put your tra connector trailer, it senses that, it puts that up and you have better fuel efficiency out of it. Super cool. But through all the time they spent, every line, every styling line went through it. An example of that is this, this radius here. And uh, the initial styling is the same, but you can notice it's a very tight radius that runs around there. And this affects uh, the drag of the vehicle and the, the coefficient of drag of the vehicle. And moving down, we have what we've done before is vortex generators or what we call aerofin stabilizers. I've seen those on the new Sienna as well. Yeah, it's, it's a great development. And our current uh, Tundra has those on the, on the tail lamps. And we've looked at how to shape them properly to get more efficiency and make them more effective on this truck. So again, looking at it. And, and a great story on those is I, uh, I got called by our aero group to go to Japan, and this is on the current truck. And uh, they're like, well, I want you to come out to the proving grounds, and you know, I'd do some other things. But we went out to our proving grounds in Japan, and it's a two and a half dry, hour drive from my office. So I drive up there, and I get out there, and they give me this presentation. They're like, okay, we can reduce, by keeping the, the wind coming in and keeping it along the vehicle, we can reduce you know, body roll as you pass semis and these type of things the vehicle becomes much more stable if we put these wings on, on the vehicle. And I'm thinking, well, this sounds great, and I'm looking at graphs and data and that, and I'm thinking they're gonna take me out and they're gonna have some big aircraft wing on the side of the truck, right? And the guy reaches in the pocket and goes, and this is our proposal. And I'm like, I drove two and a half hours for this piece of plastic, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, and. It was the most amazing thing to me because we put them on the truck and I took them off the truck and I put them on the truck. I spent four hours on the track driving. And just the stability it has, you're passing vehicles, going down the road, crosswinds, just by you know allowing the air that's coming off the front of the vehicle to hug the side of the vehicle. And you know as we move down in, in optimizing this, you can see some more arrow underneath our lamp. So this space in the, in the mirror, I said lamp, but mirror, right. and then there's there's these uh, those, little grooves. those little grooves and down here. So all this is in here to help with um, the aerodynamics of the vehicle. This space, this design, where we separate the mirror affects it. It's fascinating that such little pieces can create such a big difference. It's a huge difference. And this is why I said, you know, aerodynamics is really interesting because it's really an area on trucks we haven't examined to this level of detail. Even the door handle, you notice this line going down the door handle. Right. That's to help improve the aerodynamics. And each one of those are, there's little incremental improvements, you know, a count here, a count there, but it adds up. And finally, you, you reach this 20%. And, and then continuing moving down, even in the body design, how we chamfer this back of the C-pillar of this, how we design the roof in the back. And you can notice, um, and this is my favorite part of the whole thing, if you notice, the roof has kind of a V that comes down on top of the high-mounted stop plan. And what that does is it directs that, that wind that's coming over the hood, that air, and it separates from there. The important part of this is that uh, this wonderful roll-down rear window that we have, um, this is Tundra tradition. We always have a power down, full power down glass window. I don't like it in my truck. I live on a farm, I throw hay, bales of hay in the back, I get hay chaff back there, you open the window, and just like any pickup truck, you have turbulence back here, it creates a backdraft, and my truck is full of chaff, and, and it makes me angry. <laughs> and so Don't my, my crust on them is, yeah, we gotta keep the window, but you gotta fix this issue. You know, I don't like it. And it's not just the, the pull, full back down window, you know, the sliding windows, all trucks do it the same, but I have the biggest opening so you get the most debris coming in. And with the new system, there's no backdraft anymore. We're separating the air, it comes into our two-piece tailgate back here. That little bump on the back of the tailgate helps, again, push that air in what we call wake. It brings the wake instead of everything going down and creating tur turbulence and drag, it actually siphons it back. And now I've got really, you know, great flow going back here without any turbulence. How about the fin on the top there on the roof? Does that where does that make a difference? That's our, our antenna system. So that's your XM radio, right. that's your AM radio. The shape of that again, how does it slice through the right. air? 
So the last thing you want is something up there that's creating that interference, creating drag or turbulence. You want that air to separate off there evenly and efficiently. And then finally, one more of these, you know, well, one more up here. We Current production, we, we add these aerofin stabilizers on the, on the back, but they came back and they said, we need one higher. So conveniently, we have our, our rail cap on here and we can add this in the rail cap and it really improves the overall uh, stability of the vehicle uh, even over the current one. Okay, there's a ton of new updates and really interesting science behind the new Tundra. You drive now a, a 2020 Tundra, right? A 2020 SR5 with a TRD Sport package and uh, yeah, I maybe have a few modifications in it. But maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe just a few. So what are you looking forward to? As the chief engineer, what are you most excited about? What are you looking forward to And when you drive the 2022? That's a really tough question. I know. I mean, there's so much content <laughs> in here. But I, what I'm really thinking, um, you know, uh, we've been talking with my staff, you know, what are you going to order? What are you going to order? I, I think I'm going to get something I've never done before, and that's a, a 1794. And I'm looking forward to the real wood. I'm looking forward to the better leather. Um, I'm looking forward to 790 newton meters or 583 pounds feet of torque. Um, to me, it's the whole combination of the vehicle itself, and uh, I'm going to use it to tow my stuff around. So I will still have my 2020 that I'm going to use as my sand dune crawler, and I'm going to have my my uh, 1794 to haul haul the trailers around and the farm equipment around. And it's not even a diesel. And it's not even a diesel. And I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Looking forward to driving this one off-road. We'll see you soon.